Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sidetrack here, bringing you a third look at King Lemming's Mod Thermal Expansion. Now in the first couple of videos, we talked about basics, we talked about how to generate power, how to get it to your machines, we talked about some of the easier machines to talk about, um, the powered furnace, uh, sawmill, and a lot of the liquid handling machines. Um, today we're going to get into some of the um, different machines and a couple of the new, newer additions. So, without further ado, first thing I want to show you is the glacial precipitator. Now just like its name implies, this is ways to make things, blocks that are cold and frozen. So you can make ice, snow, or snowballs. Um, you will need a water supply for this machine. Um, and if I go ahead and turn it on, you will see that it makes things relatively quickly. Snowballs take the least amount of uh, water. And if I go ahead and switch it to snow, takes a similar amount of water and switch it to ice and just to be aware if you ever switch it and you're like ah oh, it's not making anything and you haven't you know I've done that before ice actually takes a fairly significant amount of water um, but works quite well um, same tabs as everything else you can see its power usage you can see its redstone controls and you can set its configuration pretty cool running, running out of water next thing I want to show you is the igneous extruder. So this is another machine that will make blocks. Um, you can make cobblestone, stone, or obsidian. Now cobblestone, if you give it water, you give it lava, it will make an endless supply of cobblestone. I mean unlimited. Um, this, I should note, does not take power. You do not need to give this machine power. So it just constantly makes cobblestone and I have it <clears throat> dumping out into this crystal chest behind. Infinite supply of cobblestone does not use any lava or water to make it. Stone will use a little bit of water and I think it uses a tiny bit of lava. Yeah, it does. Um, and then obsidian will use a lot of water and a lot of lava. Uh, but works very well and it's a whole heck of a lot easier to get your obsidian this way than to run around trying to take forever to mine it out of the ground. At least that's my personal opinion. So turn that off. The next thing I want to show you is uh, one of my favorites just because it's very, very, makes my life very, very easy. So this is the aqueous accumulator. Um, and it's important to note that if you just set this up on the ground, turn it on, it will very, very slowly start to pull water out of the air. Now, this might be useful to you. I don't know. Works very slowly. If, however, you surround it with water, you can see there's nothing here, and we go ahead and turn it on, it will very quickly make buckets at a time. And this is a great way if you ever use combustion engines, um, your steam engines, anything that needs water for that matter, uh, makes a large supply of limitless water. And I should also note that the aqueous accumulator does not use power either. Seems a little OP to me, but I'm not complaining. I love it. Um, you know, you can hook pipes up to it. That's how you're going to get your water out. Um, works wonders. All right. The next thing we're going to talk about are kind of a set of three of a very similar blocks. These are tesseracts. The tesseracts come in three different varieties. The first one we're going to look at is item tesseracts. So if you're familiar with, uh, I think the book was A Wrinkle in Time. Um, a tesseract is a way to transport things over very large distances. Um, it may have a route, you know, farther back than that book. It probably does, but I am too ignorant to know that. <laughs> so, um, item tesseracts, they don't require power to work. Um, they take a bit to set up, and I'm going to do another video that goes into how to make all these machines, because they're very complicated. Um, but you can always look up the recipe. That's what I always do. Um, so, what we're going to do, um, kind of come up with this interface. Um, you have a couple tabs that are worth noting. You've got a redstone control, so you can apply redstone to make this, you know, turn it on, turn it off. And the configuration tab um, changes the access, so if only you can change it or anybody. Um, and then the other thing is the, set, the transport mode, whether you, you want it to send and receive, you can select it to send only. Or receive only. Um, I'm going to click it on send and receive. And the next thing I want to show you is that you have 
to set this device to a certain frequency. Um, I have already gone ahead and done item tutorial. So essentially all I did is I typed a frequency up here, in this case it's 111. I gave it a name and then I clicked the plus button that says save frequency. It puts it down here and makes it very easy on all of your item tesseracts. This will show up. So in order to activate this, click on the green check and it will, you can see it's turned on by the kind of end or color behind there. Now my next one, I have to do the same thing. So you can see item tutorial is already in here. I click set frequency and now it says frequency set. All right, so what does this do? Well, if I take, this is an obsidian transport pipe, so it'll just, or obsidian, um, it is <laughs> actually. Um, so if I just go ahead and throw some things in here, you can see they get sucked in and then spit out on this side. Very cool, very useful. This will work across dimensions, so if you have Mistcraft installed, or if you're in the um, end, uh, the end, or the nether, you can transport items to either of your bases. It's very, very handy. It goes two ways as well. Next thing I want to show you works in a very similar way. This is an energy tesseract. Now I should note that there is an energy loss when transporting energy. I think it's about 25%. That's what I looked up. That's what I think I noticed last. Um, but it's well worth, you know, the, the loss in energy um, if you don't want to worry about making tons of um, connecting cable. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and set the energy for my energy tutorial. Make sure it's set over here. And I should note that you can see that I used actually the same frequency for this and the other one. Um, your each type of tesseract um, has, is frequency independent. So you can use the same frequency, it's not going to conflict. So I go ahead and set this. You can tell there's a space between these two tesseracts. And I have connected to this tesseract a powered furnace. Now right now it has no energy and I'm gonna go hungry because my raw beef is uh, you know not being cooked. Um, I don't have any steak in my inventory, no, no. <laughs> so go ahead and power up this magmatic engine and you can see that energy starts to flow in. My steak starts to get cooked and well I could eat it if I were hungry but it makes me happy. Very cool. Third and this should be, you know, you should be guessing what I'm about to show you here. Um, this is the liquid tesseract. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these on. Oh, I already had that one on. And just go ahead and drop the lava in here. You can see it comes right up this side. And remember, if you have this on blue, it will automatically suck liquid out of the liquid ducts that are below it. Very very cool. There is no loss at transporting liquids, there is no loss at transporting items, but there is an energy loss when you're transporting energy. Very cool. Alright, so those are the Tesseracts, Aqueous Accumulator, Glacial Precipitator. Next up um, is the Energetic Infuser. Now, this is a fairly simple block. Basically, you give it power, and then you can use this to put power in other items. So say you have modular power suits installed or anything that needs to use buildcraft energy. Um, you can see that in this case, uh, this power armor helmet has 50,000 out of 100,000 power. Well, you go ahead and place it in the blue and it will get sucked over into orange and get filled up with energy. Now, um, works fairly quickly as long as this has power um, this accepts a lot of power, um, and as you can see its maximum power that it can, you know, dump into an item is 5,500 Minecraft Joules a tick, so it takes a lot of power. Um, but all that power gets put in your item, so it works out very well. Um, so just like everything else, you can have things automatically go get pulled in here, stuck out the other side. You could turn it on and off with redstone and see the energy going on very very cool. The next item is uh, probably the newest item that has been added um, and this is actually really cool. Alright so here we have the cyclic assembler. Essentially what you're looking at is um, a fairly complicated interface. Um, it's really not that bad. So you've got input so you can input liquid, you can input items, and then you can input 
um, your schematics. So if you input a blank schematic um, on this blue schematic tab, so this has a new, new dark blue tab, you have a space to create your schematics. So say you wanted to create a schematic for stone rods. You'd go ahead and put your two cobblestones in here. Stone rod shows up. This is what it's going to be. And you click the check button. You can see that over here on this schematic that I put into the cyclic assembler, it says schematic stone rod. You need two, two cobblestones and essentially anything that gets inputted um, into this blue will very quickly get turned into stone rods. Very, very cool. Um, you know, you can go ahead and change your configuration tabs around so that, you know, just like everything else, um, I just dumped it into this chest. Redstone control, same as everything else. Energy, same as everything else. The only new thing is the schematic, and you've got this extra input um, space. So very, very cool. Cyclic assembler works great. I should mention that it does take two Minecraft jewels for every item that is made, um, but that's a pretty paltry amount, um, and it makes things very quickly. So um, we have taken a look at, uh, I think, everything that, uh, that this mod has to offer, at least at this time. Um, so hopefully you find this mod as absolutely amazingly awesome as I do. Um, and I would actually like you, uh, some feedback from you guys. Um, so in my Tinker's Construct tutorial, I really broke things down into, you know, five, ten minute sections um, and really went, you know, just on one particular thing. Um, I would like some feedback from you guys. Does it make more sense? Is it better for you for me to lump it all into one long video? Or do you like it if I were to go, you know, just do a video on energy production and then do a video on the powered furnace and do a video on, you know, each of these blocks individually. And then at the end, which is what I'm planning on doing anyway, do another video to talk about how these can be used together and how this might be used with other mods. Um, I was kind of torn in, you know, how I wanted to do this. So I tried this approach. I'm not quite sure I like it or not, so definitely give me feedback if you care, <laughs> and if you even make it to this point in the video, um, and that would be great for me, uh, and it would be great for you, because then I can do what you guys want. So I've got one more video to do um, on this. It's not going to be anything earth-shattering. Um, I guess I should say two more videos, because um, I want to go through cause some of these blocks, especially things like the uh, redstone energy cell, um, the tesseracts, take multiple steps and are not necessarily the easiest things to make. Um, and so I want to hit on that just to make sure everybody knows what's going on and you don't get confused. And I doubt you guys would get confused, but you never know. I know there are some you know middle schoolers who play this game. Um, and then my next video after that is going to be kind of some of the actual uses for this. I'm going to probably talk about you know how you can create um, you know, various uh, infinite power facilities. I'm going to go through, you know, how you can integrate some of these pumps with other mods um, to make some really cool stuff. So I'm going to stop rambling right now, and I'm going to say, until next time, this is Sidetrack signing off. You guys have a great day.